Reading and creating data is only half the story. Users should be able to edit and delete their data as well. Let's take a look at how to do that in this lecture. Okay, so we are able to add listings in, but to finish things out, let's take a look at how to edit existing listings and delete them. So right off the bat, we should note that this will look a little bit different than how it would if we had a real data persistence layer going on. And that's because if we had real data persistence, we would be doing things like an HTTP request to save new listings or to save changes to listings. And because we're working with a local array in this case on the front end, we'll just need to make changes to that array for things to take effect. So there are a couple different ways that we could set up an edit screen, but in our case, just for example, let's set up some new UI elements to take care of it. And it's actually gonna be pretty well exactly the same stuff that we have up here for adding new listings, but we're going to change a few things. So down here, I'm gonna paste in some additional HTML. And as always, I'll let you pause and copy this out. We're gonna go through it from top to bottom though to take a look. So we've got a class of listing form just like we did up above. And we're going to show this listing form if the edit listing property is true. And we've got the same input elements that we've had before, but the difference here is that ng model is pointing to existing listing and then with all the sub properties on it instead of new listing. Everything else is pretty well the same though. Then down here at the bottom, we've got a button that is gonna call a function save crib edit when it's clicked. And that button's gonna be shown if edit listing is set to true. All right, so now what we need is a way for the user to open up the editing form when they want to edit a listing. So to do that, let's paste in a button that can be used to open up the form. And let's put that here just below details. So I'm gonna paste in a button and format it a little bit. All right, so this button will be shown if show details is set to true. And once again, we can clean this up a little bit just by taking out that equals true. And when we click this button, we are going to call this function edit crib. And we're going to pass in one of the property listings here as a crib. And this crib here that we are passing in is coming from our ng repeat. So because we are iterating over all of the listings in our cribs collection, we are going to get the individual crib on that iteration and be able to pass it into this function. Now we need to actually set up that function in the controller. So let's save that and go over to the controller. And we can come down here below our add crib function and let's put on a new one called edit crib. And this is going to take the crib passed in from the view. And here we want to actually set edit listing to true. So when the button's clicked, edit listing becomes true, which is going to show that portion of the user interface. And then we are going to set scope existing listing to equal the crib that's passed in. All right, so let's take a look in the browser to see if that comes through. And as you can see, nothing is showing up for the listings. And I think what happened is I put the new existing listing edit form in the wrong spot. So let's grab this and we're gonna move all of this. Where it really should go is over here. And then we'll probably also need to add an additional closing div tag. We can format this a little bit so that it shows up nicer. All right, so let's save that and check it out. Okay, cool, everything's coming through again. And if you take a look in the detail section, you'll see that we have this edit button now. And if we give that a click, you'll see that we get the edit listing form pop up and it's populated with all of the data that we have for that listing. And so let's recap how this happens. So back over here in our editor, it's all really happening here in the cribs controller. And the cribs controller has this new function, edit crib, that takes one of the listings from our ng repeat, passes it in, and then it sets this editing listing property to true. That's what's gonna kick off the form opening up. And then we're saying that the inputs within that form should be set to the current listing that we've just passed in. 
in our ng repeat, so we're repeating crib in cribs, and then this edit button is going to take the current crib that we're on. So this edit button is gonna show up in every single one of the cards, and when we click our edit button, it's going to take the property that we're currently on. Then we also set up all of this additional HTML, this time with existing listing being the ng model, which is set to all these properties like description and then all of our details like bedroom and bathrooms as well. All right, so if we head back over, we'll see that if we make a change now to say the number of bedrooms, if we change that to five, everything's updating in real time here. If we set the bathrooms to four, everything updates over here as well. And that's because we have two-way data bindings set up with Angular. NG model allows us to do two-way data binding. And like we saw, whenever we have an input that is bound to something else, it's going to update immediately. So this is really all there is to it for editing right now. Because we're not actually persisting any data, we don't have to do much else. So the save button really isn't doing too much right now, and it doesn't really need to. But we can kind of mock out this functionality by clearing the inputs after the save button is clicked, and then closing the edit listing dialog. So let's go back over to the controller, and we're going to make a new function here, and it's going to be save crib edit. And that is simply going to say scope existing listing is equal to an empty object just to clear it. And then we'll also do edit listing is false to close the box. All right, now let's make sure that we have this save crib edit happening on our ng click. So save crib edit is coming through on ng click right here. Now let's check out to make sure that it works. So if we refresh and say that we want to edit one of these, We'll change that to five. After we hit save, everything closes and we still get five showing up here for the number of bedrooms. Okay, so that's it for editing. Let's take a look at how we can delete listings. All right, so now we wanna put in a new button in our edit dialog that's gonna take care of deleting. So let's paste one in, I'll let you copy it out. And this one's going to call a function that we'll set up in a second called delete crib. And it's going to take the existing listing, which will be the one that we're currently editing, and it's going to delete it from our listings data. This button's going to be shown when edit listing is set to true. So if the edit dialog box is open, then this button will be shown. So let's save that, and we're next going to go over to the controller to put the function in place. So let's say delete crib, scope.delete crib is a function that takes a listing. It's gonna be the existing listing that we're passing in. And to kind of mock out this delete functionality, we need to first get the index of this listing in the array. So for that, we can say var index is equal to scope cribs index of, and then we can pass in the listing to check what that index is. And with that index, what we can do is we can splice it out of the array. So we'll say, scope cribs splice we'll pass in our index and then we say we just want to remove one spot then after that we can clear our form so scope existing listing is going to be an empty object and scope edit listing is false so let's save that and we will check it out in the browser. All right, so if we go over here to our details for one of them and we say we wanna edit, if we press delete, you'll see that it takes it out. We've spliced it out of the array. You can do it for another one here and it disappears. All right, so we've got our add, our edit, and our delete functionality. And of course, off the bat, we were able to read listings. So that takes care of all the CRUD operations, the create, read, update, and delete. Just one more time to cover how that delete is working. We've got a function set up that is gonna take the current listing that we're on. It's going to find the index of that listing in our array, and it's going to splice it out. And once again, because we're not actually doing any kind of HTTP requests to delete or edit our data, we're just setting something up to fake it for now. Okay, cool, so we've got a fully functioning application that can create, read, update, and delete data. So something you'll probably have noted is that our HTML file is huge. There's a ton of messy markup here and it gets pretty hard to read. 
We've also been a little bit redundant here because we've repeated ourselves with the editing listing and ad listing portion of the user interface. And really, this isn't the best way of setting up an Angular app. There's much better ways to organize things, and we really should be taking advantage of routing and separating our template into different files. But this has just been a good way to see how we can use Angular's directives for building user interfaces. Okay, so if you've come to this point and you've got the application all set up, great work. This is just a start with Angular and there's a ton more that it can do for us.